Welcome to the next session of finite element analysis. In this session, I am starting with 2D finite element formulations. First, we will discuss about what is a 1D element and what is a 2D element. When I say 1D element, I mean that there is only one degree of freedom at a particular node, which is in picture. So here if you observe, there are different types of 1D elements as well. Say if the element is of a triangular shape. So I'll have say three nodes, one, two, three as the three vertices. At each vertex, you will have only one degree of freedom. Now what do I mean by that? Suppose if you're talking about a step bar and in that step bar, you have decided to discretize in the form of triangles. So something like this is how you are discretizing each element. So you can see each element is a triangle. That is what I've shown you over here. So these triangles are the elements. So suppose if I say that this end is fixed and this end is subjected to some sort of load and I would say that I am studying only one directional change which means when the load is applied from here this element will increase in length. So there will be a change in x direction. So I want to know the deformation u which is in the x direction. I don't want to know v because this will be zero. So this kind of analysis is called as 1D element analysis. Now suppose if I have a triangular element as you are seeing here, instead of three nodes, if I want to mark another node, so I can mark the node over here at the center. Now apart from these, you can also have a triangular element, say there are three nodes here, let me mark another node which is 4, which is between 1 and 2. So let me mark a node here 4. Say I want to mark another node, then it should be between 2, 3, which is 5 and then last again over here, which is 6. If you want, you can keep on increasing these number of nodes. Say if I want a node at the center, 7. I want more nodes, so I can mark here 8, between 1, 4. Between 2, 4, I'll mark 9. Between 2, 5, I can mark 10. Here I can mark 11, 12, 13 and this is not it. You can keep on increasing the number of nodes. Now when you keep on increasing number of nodes, what happens is you can get more number of displacements on this particular element. So when you are getting more number of displacements, what you are doing is you are getting a better solution. Rather than getting just three solutions at three corners of an element, you are, you can say, you know, zooming into the entire body and trying to find out minor levels of your displacements. So when you increase the number of nodes, what you do is you are increasing the efficiency of your solution. So this was all about a triangular element. You can also have a rectangular element which is called as a quadrilateral element. Now this is a quadrilateral as you are seeing. I can mark it as 1, 2, 3, 4 at the 4 vertices. Now you can see here a clockwise pattern of marking. If you want, you can mark 1, 2, 3, 4. If you want, you can mark 1, 2, 3, 4 or 1, 2, 3, 4. But the last two numbering which I told you, random marking of your nodes is something that is not preferred. As I have already told you, when you write the EME and GME, all the elements should be at the center, which will form the bandwidth. If your elements go towards the periphery or more towards the corners, what happens is you take up more space and your computation becomes slow. So if you want to get solutions faster, so what you need to do is you need to mark in order 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 or 1, 2, 3, 4. You can start this number 1 from anywhere to see to it that all the numbers are in a particular order. Now suppose if I want to mark like this 1, 2, 3, 4, I can have a node at the center as well just for knowing the value at this point. Similarly, I have marked over here, you can see 1, 2, 3, 4. Just observe the next pattern. Center node I have taken as 5. So next node will be between 1, 2, then I'll have between 2, 3, then between 3, 4 and finally 4, 1. So you can see 6, 7, 8, 9 in order. If you want, add 4 nodes, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. You want more, add between these two. So you can just keep on adding n number of nodes that you want just to make your solution better. Now at the end I have just written the same line which I told you that one degree of freedom at each node is what is meant by 1D element. Next we will talk about 2D element something which is very important and something that is required in this chapter. So in 2D element let's take a triangular element. So triangular element has three nodes at three vertices say. 
So at each node, I'll have two displacements, u1, u2, u3, u4, u5, u6. You may also say this is u1, v1, u2, v2, u3, v3. That is completely your choice. There's nothing like marking the way I have written. So I've written here two degree of freedom at each node. Now let's talk about a rectangular element. So when I talk about a rectangular element, again, marking in a particular order is very important. So let me say that this is my element that I have. Let me mark one, two, three, four, something different from the previous one. And I can also have a node five over here. I can have more nodes. Okay, now here I'll have from here six, seven, eight, nine. You can have more. And at each node, I'll have say u1, v1, u2, v2. I'll have u3, v3. I'll have u4, v4. And this will continue for each node. So this sentence is very important that there is two degree of freedom at each node. This is something which needs to be marked. One last thing which I want to add over here is the name of the chapter. If you observe very carefully, here you have understood what is 2D element because I just told you. When you look at the term finite, you have already understood the name of your subject itself is finite element analysis. The reason being we only analyze finite which means limited number of elements. We cannot go for infinite number of elements. Now the finite number can be 1, 2, 3, 4 or 5, 6, something that you go for in the class or maybe when you use a software it can be more, so thousands or lakhs but they have a limitation, 5 lakh, 6 lakh but a number is something which is called as finite and formulation which means you are formulating some kind of a equation for them. So this is how you justify the name of the chapter and this is what we are going to do. We are going to study about finite element formulations in the form of these shapes, triangles, rectangles. We are going to discuss about shape functions which means when you have a particular shape, say you have a triangle or rectangular element, you will have a particular interpolation or shape function which will determine the equation for a particular node. So we will start with all those things in the next session onwards. So I hope you have understood the basics of this chapter in this session. See you in the next session. Thank you. Mm -hmm.